Ahead tonight, the national exam results are released. Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, the College of the Bahamas welcomes a new freshman class. We'll bring you all the details, so stay tuned. The PLP chairman criticizing the FNM leader's recent comments. The Bahamas Tonight, the national report starts right now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The Ministry of Education is focusing on subject performance and not a national grade point average as the 2015 national examination results were released today. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, education officials recognize some comparisons between the 2014 and 2015 BJC and BGCSE exams. And as Alta Viz Munnings tells us tonight, they credit hardworking administrators, teachers and parental involvement for this year's success. 570 students took the Bahamas Junior Certificate examination this year, representing the largest sitting in its history. 1,485 students attained grades A through C in five or more subjects, compared to 2014 when only 1,400 did. That represents a 6.07% increase. 25,250 students were awarded grades A through D in their BJCs this year too, and that's the largest number compared to the last five years. In 2015, a total of 2,179 candidates received a minimum grade of D or higher in five or more subjects. This, this represents an increase of 3.86% over 2014, and again is the highest number of candidates for the period between 2009 and 2015 that received D or higher in five or more BJC subjects. Minister of Education, Science and Technology, the Honorable Jerome Fitzgerald, explained on Tuesday that out of the 11 subjects offered for the BJC, mathematics and language arts were the most heavily subscribed. Education officials recognized that art and design was the only subject that had lower entries than last year. And education officials also acknowledge an improvement in several subject areas like general science, consumer science, and the health sciences. It's still our desire to increase the percentage of grades awarded in A to D range in the BJC examinations to 85% over the next 10 to 15 years. Last year we were at 70%. However, this year we dropped to 63.32%. This drop in percentage is due to the significant increase in candidates who may have needed additional preparation to meet the requirements of the Bahamas High School Diploma, and the ministry is ensuring that no child is left behind. However, only 6,521 candidates registered for the Bahamas General Certificate of Secondary Education, the BGCSE examinations this year. That's a 3.95% decrease. A total of 961 candidates received at least C in five or more subjects in 2015, compared with 922 in 2014. This represents an increase of 4.23%, or 47, or 47 students. In 2015, a total of 1,534 candidates obtained a minimum grade of D in at least five subjects. This represents 0.071% decrease from 2014, which had a total of 1,545 candidates. Of the 27 BGCSE subjects offered, there were improvements in subjects like art and design, biology, carpentry, French, geography, and history and a decline in bookkeeping and accounts, literature, and physics. But the education minister strongly believes results will only increase once students take advantage of the ministry's free after-school exam classes. But we are not satisfied that the majority of students took advantage of these classes to prepare them to retake the BJC examinations. We cannot overemphasize the importance of adequate examination preparation and we know that it will take sustained effort by all stakeholders 
to make sure that our students succeed. Altaviz Manings, ZNS Network News. More than 1,000 students make up this year's freshman class at the College of the Bahamas. They will be introduced to a whole new, different type of classroom environment. Janae Noel Ferguson went to CLB's freshman orientation this morning and met some of the new Caribs. CLB freshman Aaliyah Gay entered the halls of the College of the Bahamas for the first time on Tuesday. She was joined by hundreds of other students, all waiting for a new experience. Now the 17-year-old says she's ready for a fresh start to study teaching. At first it was like an abstract idea, but now it's like kind of surreal seeing everybody here, signing in, taking tours. First I was a bit nervous, then I saw my friends and I was really excited to start my day. Culinary student Yervis Bain, nursing student Kevin e. Bain, and computer science student Camden Palacios are equally eager to partake in the College of the Bahamas. Um, it's a very exciting feeling to come here because I go, we did a great team for the Bahamas to have. We got a lot of students who come here have a great education. I'm excited for the new experience. I can't wait to intermingle with everyone and just enjoy. It looks like it's going to be a pleasurable experience, a good experience, and I'm glad to be one of the few that actually get to attend because of Bahamas. Was this the first option for you? Um, it was, actually. Why was that? Well, mainly because of the scholarship I can get from, you know, the BDCSDs and it's, it was the easiest thing to access at the time. Now an estimated 1,300 students enrolled this fall and Director of Campus Life Darvin Tucson said that number could increase as the application process continues for many students, especially those coming in from the family islands. Um, we want them to be a part of what is happening as we transition, give their ideas, give their input so that they together can help us improve this country. And one of the interesting things that you mentioned earlier with our males is that we're going to be introducing a male mentoring program where we're going to be encouraging more males to take advantage of higher education and to actually graduate from this institution. He added that as the college makes the transition to university, there will also be a number of firsts for the new students to enjoy. It's going to be an island fest that's going to be coming on. We also have homecoming. Um, this is one of the first time homecoming is going to be in November 2015 where we're anticipating a homecoming king, a homecoming queen, a float parade, an international basketball competition. We're bringing in one or two international college uh, basketball teams. They're going to play against our local teams. Now the freshmen are expected to be the graduating class of 2019 of the University of the Bahamas. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNES Network News. On to other news now. Immigration officials conducted a number of operations today. Immigration officer in charge of enforcement Kirkland Needley confirmed to ZNS News that 329 people are presently being housed at the detention center. The majority he identified as Haitian nationals and Cuban nationals. He noted that daily operations will continue to ensure that only documented persons remain in the country. Neely revealed though that in the last few days a number of persons have been taken to court for breaching the Immigration Act. Last two weeks or so we took about 10 to 12 persons before the court charged them for overstaying, working without work permit, uh, fraudulent passport, fraudulent work permit, and also fraudulent extension stamp in their book. Okay? What we would advise people to do is if you apply to immigration and it's granted a work permit for me to work for you, right? that does not give you the right to allow me to go and work for somebody else. We are now charging you for working out of the scope of your work permit. And my recommendation when we come across these type of person working out of the scope of their work permit is to ask the director and the minister to cancel out your time. Neely also dismissed claims that certain nationalities are being sought after. The main goal, he contends, is ensuring Bahamians are able to benefit from opportunities rather than those who reside here illegally. Thank them for it. The more the better, but we need more Bahamian to uh, um, uh, dig into what we are doing because at the end of the day, what we are trying to do, we are trying to create more jobs for Bahamian, be it high or low. The minute, the, the, every time we uh, deport ex-patriots out of the country, that means that the job is open. And so if we continue to do our job with your help, then the employers and stuff have another alternative but to hire Bahamians and pay them the rightful wage. Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Bradley Roberts tonight is responding to the opposition's calls for the resignation of the Attorney General on the grounds of a conflict of interest. 
Robert says the leader of the opposition, Dr. Hubert Minnis, has some explaining to do himself concerning the acquisition of the former StatCare facility by the Public Hospital Authority while Dr. Minnis served as the Minister of Health. The PLP chairman said Minnis should confirm or deny whether he benefited from the transaction. As the minister responsible for the Public Hospital Authority and a businessman with significant financial interest in StatCare, it would appear he was in a conflict between his public duty and his private business interests. Also, it would appear as if Dr. Minnis abused and corrupted his office as the substantive health minister by accruing unto himself an unreasonable benefit, a violation of his oath of office. Responding to the accusation from Long Island MP Loretta Butler Turner that the government is seeking to frustrate the efforts of Bahamar owner Sarkis' Merlion in getting the resort opened, Roberts had this to say. The FNM still owes Sandy Schaefer, a foreign investor in Robin Hood, a public apology. The FNM government destroyed his business and displaced scores of Bahamian workers. As for reeling in ministers, Loretta must explain exactly what did former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram reel in Chivago Lang on the Monavie debacle, dealt with Nico Grant on the Botch Roadworks, reeled in Earl DeVoe on the Pleasure helicopter ride, and called for Brent Simmons' resignation after numerous blatant acts of malfeasance. The Deputy Prime Minister once again defending the Urban Renewal Small Homes Repair Program as another home is donated to a South Beach family. The news is brought to you by the new Shell and Letter, designed for extra miles.